Hi, thank you for having us on the show. Love the show. Um, I'm My Guy Monkey from My Guy Reviews. I'm My Guy Brig. Uh, we have our own podcast. We talk about pop culture related topics. Each week we bring a new topic to the table. A bit like your own. So if you're looking for more content like this when you're done, head over to My Guy Reviews. We talk about movies, video games, fan- fighting fantasy books, TV shows. And as much as My Guy Monkey hates it, we talk music as well. Type in the word My Guy Reviews. At Spotify, YouTube and your podcast service of choice. Profiter presents the quotes. What a life is it for the birds? I always disliked them intensely, Marjorie said. They're bullies, they all they're thieves and even murderers. A crow like it was aware it was being talked about, shuffled sidewards a few inches of the golden fence, a friction of its claws, producing a sharp, brittle rattling. They mob other birds to steal their food. They kill anything smaller than themselves, no matter what it is. And that's not the worst about them. No, it's the way they look at you. As though they're waiting for you to make a mistake. Henry Howard Denswell looked up from his paper, the object of his wife's distaste, and felt himself shrug inwardly, although he didn't let it show. Just a bird, dear, he murmured. I don't think about it what it does. It simply follows its nature. Heaven alone know, knew as well. Those were enough representatives of the genius Cronorus in the best part of England. You could see them almost anywhere you looked. Most cheese had a couple in them. Why had Marjorie agreed to move out here in the first place? If she felt that way about a simple bird, a faint air of amusement hanging about him. He returned his attention to the newspaper. The gold stream had begun slowing down. He formed in the smell of the print. The green and major glaciers were melting. All very bad news, apparently. He turned the page. Events are spiraling up control throughout the Middle East. He was about to flip for the, to the sports section. Find out what was happening in the world of golf when a banging sound brought his attention up again. Marty had risen from her sun lounger, had picked up a stone and actually thrown it at the bird, hitting the fence instead. The crow, obviously, was no longer there. He was now sailing towards the half bare branches of a massive oak tree in the field behind the house to join his numerous friends. Or were they family, or both? He wasn't sure. It was late autumn, but it's still fairly mild. Marjorie and Howard only moved here on the outskirts of Little Bindrew four and a half months ago. They spent most of their adult lives in London. For convenience sake, for work, but on reaching the age of 55, he opted for early retirement and lived out the private little dream he always harboured. He sold a suburban flat and bought a property in the green expanse of Hertfordshire, countryside, 15 miles north of the capital. They had a three-bedroom bungalow now, which gave them plenty of room when the children visited. they never been there that... they never... not... There never been that before. There were massive gardens front and back. There had fresh, clean air and a lovely view. The village was one of the area's tallest hills. They had peace and quiet, in short, everything they reasonably needed. Looking south from their back gardens, could still see the outskirts of London. Although the city was vastly diminished now, it had been turned into no more than a faint, crazy grey blur sat like a strip of mercury in the far horizon. That was the way Howard preferred it, really. Been distant from the place since he never liked it there. The only downside to the new existence was the close proximity to the M1 motorway. It was less than half a mile from them, and on most days didn't bother them at all. But when the wind was blowing in the wrong direction, you could hear the snarling, jammed-up traffic. You could smell the exhaust fumes. It was, a, it was, I suppose, a minor inconvenience. The plain fact of the matter is practically impossible. Almost anywhere these days to escape the sounds of traffic. The afternoons wore on to early evening. 
Heat left the air. The instant breeze blew up, strong enough to make their fences rattle. They went, both went inside and watched the evening news. It was more than about global warming. Big rivers in India were starting to run dry. Next item was a fuller report from the Middle East. The senior anchorman, John Snow, talked to an expert. And if conflict does its ban, he says, Turkey, Saudi Arabia become involved. How was it sure what what that was all about? It didn't sound exactly promising. A massive thunderstorm broke out that night. It went on, on, on for hours. And they kept them both awake. He couldn't remember a time where they had they had been so very intensely violent. The weather. So perhaps the TV and the light papers were right. The climate really was changing. Crow or one of his friends slash brothers was back on the fence the next morning when he went to do a spot of weeding. Don't let Marjorie catch you, bird, he thought with a smile smirk. She doesn't might miss not miss this time. But as he knelt down to set to work he saw that during his her diatribe yesterday she got one thing right. There's something unsettling but the way they tipped their little heads and peered at you. They descended from dinosaurs, he reminded himself. All birds they were. Little wonder, then, they would dispense a slight air of unease around them. They were heirs of monsters, after all. They have been in the world considerably longer than mankind. The wind changed direction. A rumbling from the young one reached the garden, and the blue bird flew away. is off towards the oak tree again, where they had lost more of its leaves. There were at least a dozen more of the crows perched in it. More of them flapping around the grey, blue, dullish sky. It seemed to be on so many around his neck of the woods. Were there more crows than ever been? If that was so, then it was rather odd, because there seemed to be less than most things in nature. In the natural world these days, fewer butterflies twirling on the air, fewer frogs in ponds, fewer sparrows in the great hedge groves, and always more, been plenty of those, but he been a child. Far more crows, though. Was that possible? He watched a couple more lightened in the bush branches and of the oak. How was gazing at them, starting to get lost in a strange movement of reflection, when squeal of tires and a low thump from the lane outside their bungalow brought attention sharply round. He hurried out of front, paying no attention, praying no one had been hurt. Turned out that he was only a dog, from one of the neighbouring houses, Mitzi. He believed her name was a cockle spaniel bitch, about three years old. She escaped from the backyard and ran across the street, straight the path of brand new cries of crossfire. A man had been driving it, didn't look apologetic. He was a smart black suit, had a briefcase of his own on his passenger seat. He was apparently on his way to a business meeting somewhere. And now he was having to explain to Miss York why a pet was lying sprawled out on the road, its entrails showing. He didn't, I don't, didn't see that the thing he kept repeating angrily, repeating angrily like she wouldn't listen to him carefully enough. A small crowd would begin to cover how it looked for around. He could see the big oak tree from the vantage point. It was almost empty by this time. Most of the crews had left their perches on it and flown here instead. They were on the roofs, the fences, telephone wires, everywhere he looked, hoping for a free metal meal, perhaps. He called they were scavengers as well. They were simply waiting, simply watching. The way they cut their heads, the way they pointed their beaks, the intense glare of their small eyes. It made Howard become slightly thoughtful all over again. The news on the radio next morning contained nothing good. Saudi Arabia had indeed become involved in the conflict. Squadron whose fighter jets were striking at targets even more. Harkins springing up from out of nowhere has destroyed half of Bermuda. Things got worse, however, when he went outside. Aris Kosovil, one of their next door neighbours, came up to the garden fence with tears in the corners of her eyes and asked him, Jack and Betty Widow's boy, Daniel, have you heard? Yeah, I mean, you already knew was something of a local hero. 
He's strapping, handsome, clean-cut sort of chap. You met him one time on the high street. Daniel was a lieutenant in the Royal Marine Commandos and was currently serving overseas. Iris has cleaned the rest. He'd been in a co- helicopter near the Pakistan border, going on a, a mansion with his men. Well, no vessel of some kind brought it down. And no survivors, Jack and Betty received the news of the crackdown at dawn. A world of it has been spreading through the village ever since then. I suppose there'd be a funeral, she sniffed, touching gently at her lips. I don't know when. How long do you suppose it would take to bring him home? I wouldn't even guess. Couldn't even guess. But how absolutely awful. Such a fine young man. Howard tried to put it out of his mind and got on with a mowing the lawn. A sudden shower drove him back in, indoors again. Rain, where did it had touched him? Felt curiously warm. He turned around once safely through the patio doors and looked back. And could see the raindrops were taking dirty streaks of everything they fell upon. That she appeared to be full of dust. And and shouldn't rain? Should it leave things cleaner? The crows ignored it, continuing to flap a wheel against a cloud sky the colour of pale state late. The film was on Friday, the day before, were eventful enough, at least according to the media, since nothing more actually happened here in Little Bermuda. So a Har- Har- hurricane hit Bermuda, just as it was coming from the first, they moved to Carolina. The Greenland glacier turned out to be melting, even faster rate than previously supposed. Cots in northern India were falling for lack of irrigation. Famine alerts have been put out, whatever they entrailed. Doms have dropped, gone off in Ragadar, Istanbul, Torres, Milan, Saudi Arabia, and sent armoured divisions into the conflict. Turkey only narrowed, had been persuaded not to join in, and now having problems with militants of its own. All it seemed very complicated, though, thankfully. It was all a good long way from the here. Almost the entire village turned out for the cemetery, ceremony, so the tiny parish church could barely hold them. It wasn't they were outsiders in tenders too. Then the commanders and colleagues had never seen so many uniforms of up close. When he fell outside to watch the burial, he saw that some of them picked up rifles. Betty one of those began sobbing uncontrollably. Husband tried to confront her. Commanders lined up to fire a six gun salute. Harry looked around, but beyond the mass of silent people. The churchyard was full of trees, elms mostly, a few maples, and their branches on the staple of the church itself. Dozens of black crows were huddled, staring fixedly down. It wasn't even after pickings this time. Couldn't possibly be. They couldn't know what was inside the coffin. And so, what had drawn them here? Attending death, however, wondered momentarily, is that what they're doing? But no, it's a ridiculous idea. They were only birds, they merely, what was the phrase he used? Followed their nature. He expected them to fly up. When they first saw the gun shots rang out, but they didn't do that. Didn't so much as rustle their wings or jerk their heads. Just sat there perfectly motionless. As the rituals they marked the end of life were acted out below them. And then that generally surprised him. He'd never seen any bird react that way, or rather failed to react, to a loud and sudden noise before. When they got home, both of them were hushed and the row of them were He still nagging at him. Marjorie went off into the living room, switched on her, one of her daytime soaps. He took the opportunity to head back to the box room. A curator was kept. I had an interesting Google Crow's mythology. There were plenty of sites around that subject. Turned out a whole plethora of information. Crows showed up in a lot of Celtic and American myth. They had been the eyes of Odin, a sudden Hindu goddess, often took their form. The Babylons and ancient Greeks had legends concerning them too. Centers from one website caught his attention in particular. In many societies associated with death, since they show up in great numbers, the aftermath of battles. That's why he saw so many so large black shapes these days, because they seemed to be 
in these times so much death around no he told himself again you've been stupid you are rather depressed today and it was little wonder late in the afternoon he went his own to major's shop which then when you live in little venue involved driving to the supermarket on the outskirts of Benderton, which meant crossing young one traffic was stalled on the road bridge a motorway swept beneath him like some huge grey roaring river he moving freely into northbound lanes the south the southbound lanes had stopped completely lo- looking off his sight right how could see why there had been an accident the truck was lying on its side Several smaller vehicles were smashed up too. Where police and attendants? He supposed that people had been hurt. How could it be otherwise? But the ambulance were many were already gone. Then he noticed something else. The spindly roadside trees that Dave's discovered for years of population pollution. The field to brimming with small, from this distance, black shapes. Exactly like the churchyard trees have been. news got worse and worse the days passed till we, all we could barely stand to read it listen to it anymore more disasters more battles more further bombs including ones in Melbourne the Turkish government was the brink of being overthrown he wasn't sure the mean or how it might affect all he wanted was a nice peaceful retirement the weather was bizarre and as well hurling storms came up from nowhere out of nowhere blasting for the night sky winds blew up patched seeming winds so powerfully blew most of the garden fence down it took him hours to repair and dam- the damage and there was frequently an odour in the air like electricity or something on the verge of burning it didn't smell clean to him anymore no longer the kind of air he expected in the countryside next Tuesday he saw he was getting low on gas and drove to the supermarket again to fill up with his forecourt he hated the stench of petroleum he led the pump away from him as little dolls spun around. He read somewhere that the tiniest amount of bread breeze and lungs could cause a tremor. Tumor. You know, wind at all today it was the first time in ages. Harold gazed in the direction of the way. Could see, not see the thing. It was below him, down the steep of vomit. I could hear it very clearly. A pale of fumes hung over it, like some peripheral shroud. Returning his car from paying the bo- at the booth, he noticed something else, something rather odd. But a half dozen crows were circling quite low in the air. Above a white Mercedes transit van was part of the far end of the pumps. He stepped a little closer to it, wondering what was, tra- what was attracting them. There was a driver inside, partly hidden by a reflective screen on the window screen. Standing beside the vehicle were two young men of the late twenties or early thirties. They were either Indian or Pakistani, but clearly shaven and with fashionable haircuts, quite like unlike those damn fanatic people talked about so much. They were dressed in crisp, new looking short sleeve shirts. Stonewashed jeans and what both grinning broadly. They looked happy and sighted. Maybe he went for them north and going to a trip to London. One of them took a photo of a phone out of his pocket, punched in a number, spoke a quick few words, and then, to Howard's mild surprise, switched the phone off and dropped it in a nearby waste bin. Why had he done that? What, was it broken? It hadn't been a few seconds ago. They climbed in a van and, a van and headed off. The crowds of kindled the window wheel around above it. The crows would continue to wheel above it, swung right on the roundabout towards the southbound section and roped away. Howard watched it vanish, wondering what was about that would have been about. Big white speck and smaller white black ones all receded into the distance. More reading needed doing when he got back. He always needed doing the one thing he could the world be certain of. A lot of men complained about this job he knew. It's boring, played hell on their backs and knees. But he'd always been lucky. 
when it comes to his joints, I've got a quite feeling of satisfaction. He saw the end result. Keeping his surrounding neat and tidy was something he'd always taken pleasure from. Marjorie was in the lounge, watching more of the daytime soaps. Pieta door was Pato door was open. He could hear the actors talking to each other. About twenty minutes passed when before the feeling on ease began to ignore at him again. His head came up. He peered across the fence. The oak tree was already m- almost full of crows, and many of them as coycons and beyond it. The air as well was pendant with all them with them. They perched or flying everywhere he looked. They were most on the nearby rooftops and clinging to fire lines and lamp posts. He got to his feet, a tightness spreading quick round his dress. So many of them today, whose death might they be attending this time. A sudden shot from Marjorie captured his attention. It sounded like she hurt herself, so he huddled inside. He, he hadn't. She was still in her chair in front of the TV, was sitting up rigidly. How his gaze went to the news. Went to the screen. Channel 4 news flash. A banner on the top read. And Torn Star was back much earlier than usual, looking visibly pale and shaken. Two sexes were shot in the confrontation. One of them fatally, but a third managed to escape. Police are now looking urgently for a white Mercedes transfer van. The recent number, when he read it out, Howard realised is the one he's seen on the forecourt. Officials are trying to avoid a general panic. Snow continued, but unknown cells from it within will demonstrate. I told Channel 4 this. His focus dropped from the altar queue as a sheet of paper on his desk. There's been every indication that a planned attack this time is not conventional, but it will take a biological or non- even nuclear form. Even the President sees a new cast, had a noticeable quaver to his voice when he read that. He looked back at the camera rather gazily, like he was wondering what to say. Well, let you know more as soon as we have it. How the Margie its strange, horrified glances. What kind of madness is this? What kind of frightful world exactly were they living in these days? A light ebbed slightly in the windows and the living room. But, which was odd, because it was only Howard glanced at his watch. Half past four. It was then the clattering sound noises reached them. It fell across the house, suddenly glowing even louder. Even closer, till they're coming from directly above the floor below. A couple went outside as cautiously, being caught up. Stranger's dream. They stood down on the lawn, their heads tipped back, their mouths hanging open. Tiny fluttering black shapes, great masses of things, reflecting the cold gloss that formed across their eyes. A crow had been seen before. You see them all, and they're lifted the, from the trees and root shots, been joined by countless others. It seemed to be thousands of them, perhaps even tens of thousands, are passing over the whole village, all of them flying in the same direction, their wings setting up a cool, continuous, bucket, busy racket. So more, more of them coming, tired time, roaring inward from the north. Yes, tens of thousands, maybe even more than that. How it felt his pulse thump rapidly as a mouth getting hot and dry, of all the bizarre and unknown things he's seen, ever seen. What was causing it? They're flying south, Marjorie pointed out, putting her arms around herself and shivering. What is it? That is ridiculous. Crows never migrate all at once like this. He figured it was a moment... It was. He figured what it was the moment she said it. His heart tried to freeze up on his chest. Inside his body felt like ice. But he turned around a spot all the same. To his face in a hazy grey blur sat a rise in the fall past. The, the pa- uh, sat on the horizon, the past four and a half months, and a glazing helpless in the district cry. He saw what he was about. What it was about. No, they're not very grating. He managed to, to get out through his lungs, could barely move in the slightest. No. They're heading for London.